Hey, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Jeremy Nicolaitis, and I'm the founder and CEO of Golden Octopillar, and we are on a mission to double the sales of a 1,000 businesses in the next five years. And one of the ways that we're doing that is we're hosting an extreme business makeover. This is a five-day challenge where we get together for one to two hours a day for five days in a row, and we, we implement a framework and a process for predictable sales and to get you on a path to doubling your sales in the next 90 days. So if you're interested, definitely see the link below or head over to goldenoctopillar.com slash EBM. That EBM stands for Extreme Business Makeover. Um, head over there, get signed up. I'd love to see you on the next challenge so that we can get you on the path to doubling your sales and make you one of the thousand businesses that we're helping in the next five years. Now, beyond that, what you're about to watch right now is a great interview I did that's part of a series where I reached out to successful creative entrepreneurs and business owners to first talk to them about how they manage the COVID economy and how when the world shut down, what they did with their businesses to stay successful and what they would do if they had to start over. If they were somebody that wanted to take their side hustle and make it their main hustle, if somebody who was struggling because what was going on with the economy, how can they help their business? What are the things that they would do? So it's full of great stories, great tips. These are great people and they're sharing their knowledge and their experience. And I'm super grateful for their willingness to be a part of this and definitely watch them all because all the businesses are different and some of them may resonate with you more than others. So check it out. Definitely also check out their Instagram profiles and Facebook and follow them and, and, um, let's just share some love. So hopefully you enjoy this one and all the other ones. All right. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's with great pleasure that I introduce you to Sarah Marie Lacey. Sarah is an artist and portrait painter whose work explores the intersection between experience, emotion, and our physical selves. She creates contemplative, intimate oil paintings and drawings that investigate how our inner and outer world shape our bodies. She has been exhibiting her work since 2014 across North America and Europe and ran a figure drawing and painting school for five years, which had to close in 2020 due to COVID. She's taking this opportunity to step back from teaching for a while to focus on an important new body of work and develop her portraiture career, something she is very passionate about. Sarah, hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank it's so you. nice to have you here today. Thank you for your time. Yes. Calling in from, from Canada, the center east-ish portion. <laughs> right, did I get that? Yeah. <laughs> East letting center people in bit. yeah east that, that's what it was east center bit um <laughs> it's our inside joke from getting to know each other before starting this interview um and hopefully at some point we'll be visited by her uh three-legged cat who is sleeping somewhere in her home right now yes <laughs> i said pirate cats are always welcome so hopefully that happens but yes. um thank you for being here you want to give us a little more background and give us a little more just about what you're doing where you're coming from where you're going all that stuff yeah. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I love sharing knowledge and like passing on anything that I've learned that could be helpful to somebody else. Um, I really resonated when you reached out and were like people who are creative businesses who have been impacted by COVID. So I was like, oh yeah. yeah. Present. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> right here. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been an adventure the past year. Um, closed the school figuring out new income streams, figuring out new paths and, and trying to make the best of kind of a <laughs> not fabulous situation. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so what happened? So, outside. yeah. So like, yeah. So you've got your school going. How long, and how long was that? That school was going for five years. Yeah. Five years. So yeah. I, is, yeah, yeah so ahead, I started sorry. in 2015. Um, yeah. Closed, closed 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it had been growing. It was doing really well. Uh, I had a waiting list of students, about 300. Wow. Uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it was, um, it was word of awesome. Mouth. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really great. And I had, a, like, it was a wonderful community. It still is. It's still a wonderful community. We just can't get together in person right now. Um, but everything I taught was about working from life. So none of my students were particularly interested in moving online. Yeah. Um, so I've definitely had to do some pivoting, <laughs> right? Yeah. Figure out what I'm doing instead. Yeah. So when you talk about when, you know, is, is creating from life, like drawing and painting from life, is that because it's life drawing? Like I've seen pictures online. I've looked at your website. The studio yeah. looks beautiful. It's packed with people. 
Nobody's wearing masks and they're all super close to each other. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful, wonderful sight. It's a wonderful um, memory. Oh. Yeah. But is it because you've got you've got models in there, you've got things in the room, and if people were to um, try to have this experience from home over Zoom, it's going to be the angle of the lens. It's good. The lens is going to impact, right? Like, what's yeah. the focal length of the lens? Like, every it's distorted because it's coming through this physical device. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. That I was teaching people how to not work from photos, how to work from life, how to mentally sort of. So the the whole idea of working from life is that you learn how to construct, not just copy. Mm. And the second we move to a screen, you're right. We've got all that distortion from the lens. We have no idea what everyone's Wi-Fi connection is going to be like. So the amount of detail people get. Interesting. That gets supported. Um, and people just really, pro- most of my students came to my classes because, because people tend to fall into two different groups in their students, right? That, that some people are super happy to work on their own. That's actually their mm-hmm. preferred way to learn is by themselves on their own. And other people prefer a sense of kind of community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and like, I paid money to show up at this time. <laughs> and, so, you know, I'm actually going to have to show up. Um and so when everything kind of moved to online, I pulled my students and, and some people were like, I wouldn't mind a course on this. I wouldn't mind a course on this, but no one was like, yes, please. Yeah. 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 So you I'm asked them. I think that's great. Yeah. So it wasn't, you yeah. weren't guessing. You weren't just like assuming something you reached out and you said, Hey, what do you guys want to do? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's just like, it was like, we'll wait kind of thing. Most were like, we'll see you when all this is over. Yeah. <laughs> we miss you, but <laughs> Yeah. Now, since it was, it was local and mm-hmm. I mean, I guess, you know, it, we're dealing with a year at this point. So we've got weather. Right. I know it's not, you know, sunny California up there all the time. And, you know, you sometimes you're covered in Friday. white stuff. <laughs> right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the beach last Friday, you know, hanging out. Yeah. I love the snow. I'd love some rain. You know, we don't get that. Like for me, it's all of a sudden, you know, when there's clouds in the sky, mm. you know, it's like, oh my God, there's clouds in the sky. I got to take some pictures. I got to go do something like there's clouds, there's clouds. So like, you know, I live by the beach. So it's like, you know, I get marine layer. I get like big, long gray, like coverage, but you know, right. just beautiful, you know, Bob Ross clouds in the sky. Cumulus. Just, yeah. yeah, they don't come around too often. And so they do, it's very mm. exciting. Okay. All right. That's fair. We get a fair amount of those and it has rained and or snowed constantly for like the last 10 days. So okay. I, I have some to spare if you'd like it. <laughs> right. yeah, we'll take some. We could definitely take some. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so getting, so I guess what I'm getting at is like even just getting together in a park or some kind of outside area, it just wasn't, it wasn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. It was last year we had, especially like locally, we had restrictions on park gatherings mm-hmm. up to a certain point. Um, When that was lifted, then it was kind of unsure about city bylaws, whether I could do anything in a park without having a particular permit. But then no one's ever done that before. So nobody knew exactly what permit to give me. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Some people were doing things, um, but I I noticed that not tons of people were showing up, even outdoors. People were feeling pretty cautious. Um, So it just it seemed like a lot of work. (laughs) <laughs> for something that was maybe not going to prank me a lot of money. Yeah, uh, right. Right. That's a good point too. And yeah. you only have so much time in a day. Right. So yeah. I thought, okay, better to pivot and spend my time and energy pivoting and yeah. figuring out what's next and building new income streams. Mm-hmm. Um, than trying to chase something that in a lot of ways is ready and waiting for me. Like I had to close right. my physical studio and then it got demolished anyway. <laughs> Oh, right. I did read that too. I was going to ask like, so then the building, the building's gone. The building's gone. <laughs> Man, so, um, I but somebody's I, trying to tell you something. <laughs> right. It, it did feel like a sign from the universe. Um, but there's a local art supply store here. They have workshop space. They really want me to come teach there again, once everyone is vaccinated and it feels safe. Right. When the time is right. When the yeah. time is right. And I have sort of 300 plus people who are, who keep emailing me and going, when, when do you think, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, do I look like a doctor? No. Can I, let me just pull out my COVID predictor here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let me pull out my magic eight ball. <laughs> yeah. So then, so, so what did you do? So you had to do something. You couldn't do that. Like you were literally forced, like here it is. COVID came. It just shut me down. Right. Yeah. So what, so yeah. what happens? Um, 
So whenever this kind of thing happens, because even though like COVID may be new, but like the year before I broke my leg and couldn't work, I have long-term chronic health issues. Sometimes those flare up and I can't work. So I'm not unfamiliar with the, ooh, everything is up in the air and on the ground. (laughs) What do we do now? (laughs) This is fun. Um, I always assess like, what is the shortest path to income and focus Mm -hmm. on that first? Yeah. And so last summer I happened to have quite a few commissions. And so I was working on portrait commissions for the most part. Um, And then I also had to, also last summer was mostly focused on kind of closing my studio in June, getting all of my students to come and take their stuff home. Finally. (laughs) That took a few rounds. Um, You guys really, the building is going away, right? Like you've got to come get your stuff. (laughs) Literally have to, or it is actually going in the garbage. Um, and so like, and selling off studio furniture. So that was actually my shortest route to income. Okay. I had studio furniture and I had demos. So I sold as many demos as I could. I sold off studio furniture. I managed to make a few thousand dollars just from that. Okay. Um, the summer was focused on commissions and then moving out of the studio packing. And my last apartment was a shoebox, So I couldn't work out of it. Um, so I also needed to move myself into a larger apartment, which is where I am now. Uh, so last summer was a lot of just packing <laughs> and then physical transition, physical transitions and all the steps those take. Um, mm-hmm. and then September was kind of when I was in a new space and felt like it was really a fresh start and figuring out what was next. Um, and with a better idea of like how the city was handling the pandemic, how the province was, how the country was, what were my actual options, what was limited. Um, so things like I was supposed to teach a workshop in Edmonton in December. That wasn't going to happen, right? So like, yeah. <laughs> those kinds of things, like I'm looking either hyper, hyper local or stuff that is virtual or I'm selling internationally. Yeah, right. Right. Um, so started and I, I had a couple of publicity um, opportunities come through and I'd spent so much time running a school takes a lot mm-hmm. that yeah, between right. just me, myself and I. Um, so between actually teaching the classes and then all the admin. Right. That was 40, 50 hours a week. You had a job like you, even though I, you were running your own business, you had a job. I had a job. Yeah. And there were expectations and like, you can't, I couldn't just be like, oh, it's Thursday night. I don't feel like teaching class tonight. I'm going to stay home. (laughs) You don't get to do that. Yeah. Um, Not unless you break your leg, (laughs) then you get to stay home. Right. Yeah. But you still have (laughs) to pay the bills. Still have to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. So on, on the one hand, I am really enjoying the freedom of, I don't have that big overhead bill anymore. No one expects me to do anything in the evenings. So I get my kind of daytime painting time back. I'm not sort of going, okay, well, I could do a few hours of this, but I have to be alert from 6 to 10 p.m. So don't tire yourself out now. Right. There's expectations later. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I kind of started with uh, my personal website had not been paid attention to <laughs> in five <Okay>. years. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I rebuilt my personal website. I started focusing on what I wanted long term mm-hmm. and thinking about, okay, what are the things I can do now short term to start building things long term as well? Yeah. yeah. Um, had a few more commissions that kind of took me through the end of last year that took most of my sort of work time. Um, and were all those commissions, were they all ones that people had reached out pre pandemic and they were, you were kind of, it was backed up. Yeah. I would say three quarters were pre pandemic. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got a few post pandemic mm-hmm. and then there's the, there's been a blip the past few months and that always happens. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always really honest about this stuff because we, it's so easy to see other people's success and think that like, mm-hmm. it's just been this beautiful uphill. <laughs> right. It <laughs> rarely is, right? Yeah. It rarely is. Right. And you have to understand when you're switching income streams, like there's going to be this point in time where like one income stream has kind of, I keep describing it as like one thing has ended and the other thing is building. And sometimes you're here. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you're in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> you're we in the try middle. to plan it right. We when we yep. can, right? Because even yeah. even in your case, right? Like, you're the whole world came shutting down, and literally, like your business, the building, it's all gone, right? <laughs> but you had that commission, right? You so you had 
work. So it wasn't like the revenue stream turned off for you, right? Mm -hmm. You had, because you were established, you were doing your thing, you had all this work lined up. So yeah. you could see it, even though you could see it coming, right? And, and I'm, I'm right there, I'm with you. And I, I know exactly what you're talking about is yeah. it's out in the future and it's months out in the future, right? Like, this, is like <laughs> this is like the end of last year, maybe the beginning of this year or like right now, right? And it's like yeah. the commissions are coming down and like you're building up, you know? Okay, all right, yeah. keep going, yeah. I'm with you, I'm with you. Yep, so I was also looking at like, what else do I have? to bring in money? Like what are short term kind of ways? Um, what is on hand right now? Some of it was mm -hmm. selling small paintings. I made a bunch of like, you know, six by six little still life studies, partially for fun, but partially because I know that there's a market for them. Yep. Um, so some of those sold like right off the easel. Like yeah, I posted I them like, mine. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, one of the things that I've heard and I've been pleasantly surprised about is mm -hmm. that art continued to sell, right? Yeah. I kept hearing, oh, you know, the hardware stores are doing so good and everybody, people can't go on vacation, they can't do anything, so they're they're fixing up their homes. But I didn't think fixing up your homes was also fixing up your walls, right? And right. and like buying art. And so I've been, I've been, I've, it's been very happy to hear that people continue to buy art and artists have been able to yeah. continue to sell their work. Yes. Yeah. That was a big thing that made a difference at the end of last year. Um, Q4 last year, I sold like, th I sold three big paintings in 10 days and that made a significant difference. Um, so yeah, people were still, they were still spending money. That's great. Um, so, but then you always have like that post Christmas dip. Uh huh. So I had some, I had some commissions post Christmas that had started previous to Christmas and were kind of following through and finishing up. Yeah. Um, but then I was like looking at, okay, there's always that dip with portrait commissions. There's always the post Christmas dip. Mm -hmm. um, what other ways can I bring in money? And so that ended up being, so last year when the pandemic shut everything down, I was three quarters of the way through three classes and I had an option of either refunding everyone their money, which was a significant chunk yeah, <laughs> um, or finishing them online, mm -hmm. um, which was part of how I figured out that like my students didn't super love online. They watched some of the videos, but it took them quite a while. They attended some of the live stuff, but not everyone. Like it just wasn't people's jam. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it meant I had 14 hours of recorded class time. Mm -hmm. um, and even though it's not, it's not perfect, it's not, you know, the highest quality stuff, because uh, mm. I was figuring out how to do it in my tiny apartment with one little <laughs> lamp above me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the audio is good enough, the, the sound quality is good enough. It is directed to students like I'm talking to people who've had three quarters of a class, right? So I don't necessarily explain every last thing. Right, right. But I thought alumni mm -hmm. would find these useful. They'd understand the terms that I'm talking about. It would be a good refresher for some of them. Let's package this up and, and make some bundles. So I had individual classes and then I priced it so that buying the bundle of all of them made the most sense. Mm-hmm. So, Beautiful. Right. So it's like, OK, for the people, because I know I definitely have some students who would just want the one class and they've got a really tiny budget, 25 bucks. You know, I can serve them. Mm -hmm. But the people who have a little more money and want to get the whole thing. OK, 120 bucks. You get all of them. Yeah. Yeah. You save That's enough great. money that it makes it enticing. Um, that took and it's the thing to remember, like all these things take time to set up. Mm -hmm. You may have some brilliant idea, but then at least in my case, every single tech thing that could possibly go wrong, including my laptop acting up happened. Yep. It's always something, uh, something comes something. in. Yeah. Or literally everything. Um, <laughs> what do they say? Disruption follows intention or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, it's something like that. Um, so it took me like three, four weeks to get all of this set up. And, and even though the videos were all done, like yeah. just getting them uploaded for sale, labeled properly, building a site around all that stuff that took three weeks. Yeah. Um, so that's been bringing in some money. Again, it's mm -hmm. a new income stream. I'm asking people to interact with me in a new way. Yeah. And so it's not, some people were instantly on top of it. Some people I'm noticing that like 
because I'm, I'm sending newsletters right to my students, really digging into what each video has. Mm -hmm. um, then they start to see the value, right? So that's the thing about changing even how you deal with your current right, audience. Right. They don't know what you're giving them. Sometimes you got to like really spell it out. <laughs> yeah. And right. Say, yeah. Here is the value in what I'm offering. Oh, right. Yeah. You got to sell the value. That's exactly what it is, right? Like yeah. you're selling the value of something, not the cost or the ex or the actual product. It's like what your life, what will be added to your life by yeah. if you buy my product, right? And yeah. that value, right, has to be greater than your price tag. And then it's a no brainer. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So again, switching, maybe not the audience, but how I sell to that audience, right? They got really used to, I used to be, I would email about a class and three hours later it was full done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they knew what to expect. Um, but now these people, as you're doing that, they'll mm -hmm. start to understand, they'll start to get it and they'll start to respond faster. Right. Yeah. You have to, you have to build it. I love what you're talking about here, right? Like you, yeah. the, 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 the studio comes down, you have to fulfill, right. You got to fulfill, you have to finish those classes, right. Or you have to yeah. refund everybody. And everybody was like refunding things everywhere. Like, what are you going to do? Like businesses yeah. are being as understandable as they can, but there's a lot of money going back and forth. And so that's, you need that money. So what can I do to fulfill on what I've already sold them? Right. So you create this, this, this other, you finish the course with creating um, a virtual class, right? Yeah. And it's recorded, but then you now have that and you can mm -hmm. sell it to everybody. I love that. That is so good. You're taking something you already have and you're selling it, right? But yeah. it takes time to put it together. And I experience that all the time. It never goes as fast as I want to. And anytime I try to rush it or skip steps, it never works out. And then I got to do it again, right? Yes. It's, it's never, there's, there's never <laughs> enough time to do it the first time, but there's plenty of time to do it the second time. Right. right. And then, so you do it and, um, but you got to get people to, you got, it's that communication. It's like, well, what is this? Right. So even, right. Cause it's hard. A lot of people are just starting from zero. You're not, you're not starting from zero. You're starting like you have people that know you, they like you, they trust you, but they yeah. still like an un, like, what do they say? It's, um, an un, uh, a confused buyer never buys, right? Yes. So they don't know. And so you have to educate them and, yeah. and build. But what I like, but what I think the, the common thread through everything that you're talking about is that you have an idea, right? Like one, I need money, right? Let's just start with that right. common thread. <laughs> I need money, right? Like, <laughs> it's cold here and I need heat, and I need lights and you feel like I need money. Right. So, but then you have an idea, right? Cause you're, you're a very creative person, but you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. Like you yeah. manage and run your own business. And it's less about, we haven't talked about, you, you barely said like, Oh, you've got the admin stuff with the school, but it's always been like, I have this idea of something, some value that I have, whether it be, you know, art or education or something, and I could sell it, but you're completing it. I think that's where so many people, and it's important to, to, to really highlight this thing is that you have an idea and no matter what it takes, if your computer's breaking down, if there's a, a pandemic, like things are just not working, you still finish it and you put it out there. And then when you put it out there, it doesn't just like skyrocket to the moon. It's like, yeah. You know, we get all excited. We're going to launch this thing. We're going to sell this thing. And it's like, right? Like, it's just like, it, like, it's so sad. And can it be so like we can, know, depressing? It can be so disheartening. Um, and I think, and I think that that is the danger sometimes of these, like the formulas that get sold people and like the blueprints and like, just do these three easy steps and it'll work. And, and people get so discouraged when it doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's so important to kind of, I think it's so important to focus on process versus product, whether you're making art or you're selling something that my students used to say to me, because my work looks very detailed. Um, and it's not that it isn't, but people would say to me like, well, how do you have the patience to do it? Oh, I can hear my cat. I hear him. I hear him. Yeah, he's coming. He's he's very mad that I'm having a conversation. Or who are you talking to? <laughs> come on, bud. <laughs> yeah? Hi. Are you going to come join us? Do you have advice? I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> He'll shuffle his way over here in a moment. Yeah. Um, uh, 
but my work never takes patience because I love the process so much. So I'm so it. excited about the process that like, oh, eventually there's a finished painting and that's super great. But I'm really in love with getting to that point. Yeah. And I try to bring the same attitude to building income streams that my job is to show up every day or every other day or whatever, show up consistently yeah. and tell people about what I'm doing, share the value of it, share little bits of useful things that they can put into practice right now. So like this afternoon, I'm sending out an, you know, an email newsletter to my student list about one of the videos. And most of that email is actually advice on how they can keep practicing at home with or without me. Mm -hmm. And if you want support, here's an egg video. Yeah. Yeah. I get them to eat eggs a lot as a a practice exercise, but (laughs) it's an egg video. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Had I not seen like your stuff and like, looked at it, like would I I could picture, I could see an egg, like in your, I'm I'm pointing like to my other screen, which I have your Instagram up right now, but the egg isn't there, but I saw the egg. (laughs) Yes. Eggs are, cl- and like they become this sort of like internal, like this running inside joke with me and my students because I yell at them about eggs a lot. Um, so we sort of like made a bunch of jokes, told them how to keep doing that at home, lovingly scolded them because that's what I do. And then was like, and also here's a video. It's 25 bucks. If you want to watch me do it first and then watch me 800 more times and then do it yourself, here's how you can. Um, Okay, now we're going to pause to introduce the cat. (laughs) Okay, all right, let's do it. (laughs) He can't jump up on his own, so I have to uh, give him some support. Come on, bud. Would be appropriate to say this is excellent? Yeah. (laughs) I definitely ended the email with excellent. (laughs) He's big. You know, you hear a three-legged cat, and I think, you know, skinny and frail, but like. No, he is a three-legged Maine Coon cat. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Fluffy and kind of heavy. Yes. He's 13 pounds, I think. Okay. How did he lose his leg? Um, it was amputated after. So he's been hit by two cars. I, I adopted him five years ago. Okay. Um, he was brought into the humane. I'm his third home. So he went wow. through a couple other people before I got him. Um, but the humane society. He was brought in seven or eight years ago. I think, um, with a broken pelvis, but also a fused front left elbow. Um, So while he was recovering from, and they think he got hit by the second car because his fused left elbow meant he couldn't walk properly, so he couldn't get out of the way. Right. Which they suspect was from a previous car accident. Man. Um, So him inside. Oh my God. Yeah. He's actually terrified of the outdoor outdoors. Now I brought him out once and he was like, this is horrible. I'm going back in. Yeah. I can imagine. I would be yes. too. Right. So now he's just gonna, now I just cradle him like a baby for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he's awesome. I love him. Yes. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> well, so this is super awesome. This like, it's so valuable. I love everything that you're saying. I love that. Cause I think also at the core, we were just talking about with the emails and everything is that, it's value. The first thing is like, yeah. I want to help. It's why you're here right now, right? It's so why we're having right. this conversation is that yeah. we're just like, let's put goodness, let's put value, let's put it out there, let's share with everybody and hopefully people get it. And I think you kind of started, to, you touched on one or I was kind of picking up in the background mm-hmm. um, because you said, you know, at, at some point you talked about like at your own pace or your own rate, or you said, you know, every day, you know, you, my progress, but I, sh- I show up and it's every day or it's every day or, and in my mind, it was like, whatever works for you. Right. Yes. And it's like, what works yes. for the individual? Let's not put added stress. Like there's enough stress and concern and worry and anxiety Absolutely. out in the world. Um, yeah. I mean, forget about pandemic stuff, just paying the bills. Right. Just yeah. like, yeah. And if just we're so concerned, yeah. Right. <laughs> and the sometimes instability that can come with that. Um, yeah, I, so for me, and this is not going to be true for everyone, but I find marketing is easier if I kind of make, I do all that executive decision-making earlier in the month. So like, I will make like a May marketing document and I will write out all of the things that I need to promote. So, you know, I need to tell people I have art videos. I need to tell people I have one-on-one mentoring. So I'll critique people's paintings, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, or help them plan a project if they don't know how. Um, I have portraits, I have actual art. Like I've got at least four or five things that people can buy from me. 
And Mm -hmm. I need to be consistently telling people about that or else they don't know that they can give me money. (laughs) You have to tell them. Yeah. 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 And you know what? It's okay. Like it's okay to ask for money. Right. And it's okay to ask for more money than you would be comfortable buying something. Right. Like don't, don't sell something based on your own wallet, sell it based on the value. Right. And it's okay. Right. Like, I can't afford my own work. (laughs) 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 That's fine. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you get it for free. So it's okay. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. (laughs) Running out of wall space, actually. (laughs) Because I went from a thousand square foot studio with lots of walls to a smaller apartment. So like in my defense, lost a lot of wall space. (laughs) Yeah. More stuff to sell. I do. I do. But I have to tell people that it's there. Right. So I kind of list out, okay, what do I need to promote this month? And where do I want to promote it? So I use Instagram mostly. I also use Facebook. And then I have my newsletter list. So I try to write to my newsletter list at least twice a month, sharing stories with my collectors, sharing portrait commissions with them, giving them ideas for portraits they could commission. Um, I have students that I want to promote to. So I, I just list everything out and make like a really basic plan of like, oh, and then, and then I take it week by week. So I don't have to plan the entire month. Right. Yeah. At the beginning of the week, I sit down and I go, okay, what are we doing this week? All right. I want to post here, 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 and here. I need four, four posts. And I use scheduling. Like I use Planoli to schedule my Instagram posts. Um, and actually Facebook business suite. You can schedule everything for Facebook right. and Instagram now. Yeah. Can you do yeah. stories? Do you know if you can, can you pre? Um, you can, I think you can schedule stories with Planoli and maybe some of the other ones. You might have to pay for that. I tend to make my stories be much more, um, I like them to be spontaneous. They tend to be like snippets from my studio or a picture of the cat or whatever I'm working on. More personable, just fun behind exactly. the scenes stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I let it be a place where I'm not as worried about selling. I get to just show my personality post in the same way that like I used to use Twitter back in the early 2000s thousands of like I just want to post this like pithy and hilarious thing I've noticed stories has become that for me okay right yeah I like that <laughs> yeah so how much I time do you spend <laughs> what uh, so you because you, you, you like you said you have to let people know what you're doing and what's available you're talking about planning it how much time do you spend in marketing <sighs> It varies from week to week, but I would say probably 40 hours a month. Yeah. 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 About, About 10, 10 hours, hours a week, week two hours yeah. a day. Yeah. 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 A couple of ends. Sometimes it's, you know, some days it might just be an hour that I spend mm-hmm. between like, and I tend to kind of throw, you know, emails under there as well, because mm-hmm. often emails are communicating with clients. It's a form of marketing. Yep. Um, doing my like bookkeeping and stuff like that, that all falls under, like I kind of throw it all under administrative stuff. What okay. keeps my business going? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I would say at least five, six hours a week of that is, is marketing or, or planning my business, you know, not just working in the business, but working on the business. Yep. Um, I really want to get into doing more um, kind of corporate por- portrait commissions. Mm-hmm. Um universities and things tend to get institutional portraits. That's a thing I'd really like to do more of. Um, so I've been looking at like, okay, how do I rewrite my portrait sales page so that it's not just geared towards families right now? I've been doing a lot of family stuff and I really enjoy that, but I'd like the challenge of doing kind of bigger, different kind of stuff. Um, yeah. and, and figuring out, you know, I'm speaking to a different audience. How do I, how do I write that? Um, mm-hmm. You got to know your market, right? You got to know who you're talking to. Yeah. You can't market to the wrong market. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Because then if you know, you're, you're falling on deaf ears. It's it, you don't want to waste your time. I try to be, I'm a big fan of working smarter, not harder. I know how much I can work in a day. I can do five hours of really focused work. Mm -hmm. That's what I've got. And I break it down into 25 minute chunks and that gives me 12, 25 minute chunks. And I schedule that. Nice. Nice. I like that. I do the same thing. I chunk time like that. And just, uh, and I, and I don't have much more, I don't know if it's five hours, but it's got, you know, for me, it's about, you know, four to six a day. I don't work much more than like six hours a day. And I don't, so I don't waste my time pretending to work and just like being actively busy and not doing anything. Right. 
yeah, I'm either on or I'm off. Um, and some of that is because like, I do have some health issues and that's going to always limit how much focus I have. Um, so I'm just really conscious of how I spend my time and I try not to fill it with too much busy work. It's like, if I'm doing something, I'm doing something. I am yeah. working on a project. I'm either writing copy or I'm planning some marketing or I'm painting. Yeah. I love you know? it. I love it. And, and, and you know, you've, you've glossed over it a couple of times, but like health issues, like it's a lot of people, you know, a lot of people out there dealing with health, health issues, whether they speak openly about it or not. Right. right. And, you know, a lot of people either don't give themselves the opportunity or other people don't give them the opportunity, but like kudos to you. You're a creative, you're running a successful business. You're an entrepreneur and you got, you got issues. Like you got your stuff. Like we all have issues, like all of us. Right. And you're not letting it get you down because you're just, you show up every day and you take action or every other day or whatever days right. work for you. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Keep exactly. And you keep yeah. going. I love it. I love it. So I do want it. So, you know, we talked about COVID the whole point of these, these videos right now are to help people who are struggling, who have lost everything and are trying to figure out how to rebuild, or they yeah. may have lost a job that they weren't, um, they weren't being creative to begin with. They weren't, they weren't doing their own thing and now it's time to do it. You've, you've given, so much valuable information. Thank you so much. Um, what would you say? And it doesn't have to be because I think you've all said it. I, you've said it already. But I just kind of want to organize the thoughts a little bit in terms of for somebody who is either trying to figure out how to pivot or trying to figure out how to start from zero, just like the steps that you would go through super broad strokes, um, yeah. but like just to, to, to just bring some organization into the path, right? Yeah. Um, so I always assess things in terms of short-term and long-term, right? That what is, what is the quickest path to money, but also like, where am I going? Where do I want to go? Um, that, let's say, I, and this is a really obvious example. Um, let's say long-term, all I want to do is paint giant horse portraits, that's my big goal. Want to do horse paintings. That's, that's what I'm excited about. Um, I'm not going to, I don't know, start doing abstracts, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> you know, maybe doing small pet portraits is a place to start. And, and maybe at first, yeah, you're, you price yourself more affordably because you just need to get cash in the door you need to get some testimonials. You need to get some people ranting and raving about how great you are to work with. It's okay. It's, it's going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> I remember those days of like, because you're also still, you're, it's going to take a while to figure out what feels like a good price for you too. I think yeah. Yeah. Um, staying flexible, like don't let it be an experiment. I think is the yeah. best attitude. To have. Testimonials. That's huge, right? That's that testimonials are worth doing something for free to get a testimonial because a testimonial is the easiest way to sell your work because you're not selling it. Right. Exactly. Somebody, it's somebody else's words. Like, look, this person is saying these great things and, um, and you can always raise your prices. You can all, you have the right to price your product at whatever you want to price it and you will figure out. And maybe if, you know, the price is coming in is, is low and you wanted to get high and they're not buying, maybe you're not marketing to the right buyers, right? Maybe that's also you know, a great point. Yes. Like it's saying, Hey, the, well now people aren't buying my stuff. Well, maybe you have to talk to somebody else. Maybe you got to put your sign up in front of a different group of individuals. Right. And that's okay too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That just it, lack of sales is not always an indication that there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with the work. It's often just a strategic or tactical thing. Yeah. 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 Figure out what needs to change. Don't beat yourself up. It's okay. Just like try yeah. something different. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I love it. I'm loving all of this. I really like how you're talking about, you know, I do the quick, what's the short term quickest way to cash. Right. And while I'm doing this, I'm planting the seeds for some, for the longer term. Right. So I'm going to yeah. do this now, but I'm going to do the horse painting later. So I'm going to start doing things and I'm going to work that way. Right. And there still might be, you might that you know the short term might dip a little bit before the the long term comes in there might be a little yeah. valley none of us are a perfect graph sometimes we get lucky and it looks like a hockey stick but that is just that's more marketing than reality anyways right 
oftentimes yes or like yeah sure the gross number might be huge but how much did it cost you to get there like <laughs> right <laughs> yeah revenue is a very different number <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah. um well this has yeah. been so so good um what is there any kind of like you know kind of final thoughts anything you want to add that we may have not have touched on anything some some value for the people out there I think I just want to really reiterate the value of, of baby steps and, and breaking things down into really small manageable tasks, especially because it can feel overwhelming. I have to, you know, that, that feeling of, I have nothing like no one is following my work. I'm starting from absolute zero. How do I get from zero to actually sustaining myself? Yeah. That's a big question. (laughs) That's that's a terrifying question at times. Um, Finding ways to break it down to really small steps and then showing up regularly. Maybe it's not every day, right? Maybe you do get a part-time job to bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. It's also okay to bridge the gap. (laughs) I have a background as a web designer. I have bridged the gap. It's everything is okay. It's all okay. Like don't have, we, so we have so many self limiting beliefs. We've like, as we get older, like there's so so many reasons for us not to do something. Mm -hmm. Everything's okay. I mean, I say everything. Okay. If it's like, you know, morally and ethically correct, right? Like as long as it's within those parameters, it's all okay. It's your life. You could do you and, and, yeah. and yeah, don't worry about so much. I love the baby steps. You, while you're t- saying it, it reminded me, I read, um, uh, this was probably a month or two ago, but the book, um, the one thing, have you read that one? You're familiar with that? No, I haven't. In there, one of the chapters is they talk about breaking everything into manageable steps and like focusing on one thing, but they give this, this um, illustration of with dominoes and that a domino can knock over the next domino that's 50% bigger than the, this domino. Yes. And within like, they say something within like within 42 dominoes, you can like knock over the Eiffel Tower and then another like, you know, 50 dominoes, you can hit the moon. Right. And it's, but you start with this like little tiny domino and it's just like, you know, I do the same thing. Like you're talking about breaking into like all the way from chunks of time during the day, your your 25 minute chunks. Right. And then your, you know, weekly sub chunks of marketing that you've looked at on a monthly level. Right. I do the same thing. I break it down and, and I don't have um, my, I don't, I'm not a big goal setter in the terms of like um, new year's resolutions or, you know, I'm going to do this, right. I'm more of, I, I want to do those things, but I'm more of like, what's the daily activity? What's the lifestyle that I can yeah. live where the side effects, right. Are going to yes. be the outcomes I desire. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. life is about the path. Like life is how you're living it every day and enjoying yourself. Right. That's the whole basis be- behind like create and live free. Right. Like let's create things exactly what you're doing. Like you are creating things, even if you weren't um, a painter and an artist, yeah. right. Say you were creating businesses that were unrelated to the art world, right. You yeah. would still be a creator. You were creating something. And the idea of living free is how we structure our time. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I really dig it. It's something that it actually took, covid to really make me see right when i get to like change the way i live my life and spend more time with my family and doing the things i love right and enjoying my day yes. and i'm not i'm not giving up today for tomorrow i'm not working and giving up monday through friday for saturday and sunday you know what i mean and yes there's so much so much to that i dig it i dig it man we like so you know, it's like, there's a foundation to these things. And I feel like we've been all over the place, but it's been so good. Like we're just like format went out the window and we're just conversating and, and I, I dig it. I dig it. Um, I'm so glad. Yeah, I, no, hope, I hope people followed the meandering trails of this conversation and got something I useful. Out. Will. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think that you're a really good example of a, a good human doing the right thing, right. And living the right way. And because you're talking about things that sometimes people feel icky about it. Like, I don't want to sell, like, I don't want to like stand up and say, Hey, everybody look at this stuff. Right. Like, no, like, especially in the creative world, like we just don't want to do that. But if you don't do that, you don't get to have your life. You don't get to live free. Right. Like you don't get to do those things. And, um, I thank you so much for your time and sharing everything. It's been so good.
I'm so glad. I do have to say, getting some bricks and mortar overhead of running the school, it gets you over that uh, fear of asking for money pretty darn quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, for me, that was actually, I bought like a big part of my background and my story is that I, I walked away from like a big, like, um, I guess, corporate creative, I was global creative director. Right. And I like, I was had a like high paying job, like really like cool stuff going on. And I walked away and bought a business, right. I brought a, bought a brick and mortar print and marketing business in, in the neighborhood, so to speak. And, um, Whoa, that was heavy. That was like one of like, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I'm I'm laughing about it now, but I tell stories about how, you know, I'm like, I I did this post within the past couple of weeks and I called it my fetal 15. And it was the 15 minutes I spent every morning, like curled up like a baby, not wanting to get out of bed and not wanting to go like do the stuff I had to do, you know? And, uh, yeah, I'm, I, yes, I'm, but, but I, I learned so much from it and, yes. um, and I love the entrepreneur spirit and lifestyle and doing all that. Um, but you know, you got to learn, you got to go through that stuff and, uh, yeah, you learn real quick how to ask for money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you get know. over it real fast. <laughs> There's a lot of people asking you for money too. It's like, Hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, how can everybody, uh, find you, follow you, just check out more stuff about you. Yeah. So Instagram's probably the place I spend the most time. And my handle is at SM Lacey. So that's S M L A C Y. No E in Lacey. That's very important. Um, and uh, my website is smlaceyart.com. Uh, spelled the same way as my Instagram handle, but with art at the end. And uh, the Drawing Room Studio, Ottawa. Uh, you can Google that to find my old studio website that still has videos for sale. It's how you can contact me if you want to do some one-on-one mentoring. Um, yeah, that's me. Cool. Awesome. And I will certainly, you know, be sharing those links and everywhere this goes. And, um, again, thank you so much for your time and being so generous to share everything with everybody. I'm very happy to, to be here and to help in whatever way I can. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, so hopefully you enjoyed that interview as much as I did and you're checking out all the interviews. And remember, if you're looking to grow your business for any reason, head over to goldenoctopillar.com slash EBM. That's EBM for Extreme Business Makeover. And we'll get you on the path to doubling your sales in the next 90 days. And also, don't forget to head over to Instagram and Facebook and follow all these amazing business owners and keep checking out what they're doing because they're great people doing great things. And I want to share as much love as I can with them. So thanks and have a great day.